Hi, I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. Continuing our look at the Lost Secrets series with this one, Ancient Mysteries, the Pyramids. What's a pyramid? Well, that's the mystery now, isn't it? I deleted my character and created it again because I went past the intro earlier and there's no way to go back. So I'm starting over. Our hero, Professor Carter, gets a call from an old friend about an important archaeological discovery in Cairo, Egypt. His friend begs him to drop everything and come look at it. You read a book somewhere along the way and remembered what you read. I knew you were the right man for the job. So he's Indiana Jones Jr.? What's that supposed to mean? A little backstory might have been nice. I'll bet it's those pyramids. I'll bet we're going to uncover some sinister plot of theirs. Carter decides the first step is to go check out that KV-23 tomb and see what they found. The game begins. Each chapter has a menu like this one with different places to explore. It doesn't seem to matter what order you explore them in. Except that one. Each menu has one of those. It's where you gather the information you found in the other places and where you sort it all out. As for the others, pick one and go. I chose the Egyptian Museum. See that bookmark? That's our chapter counter. Each time we finish a chapter, it gets marked off on the bookmark. We have a new interface, but it's similar to the one in Bermuda Triangle in that it has the list down the side where it's easy to see. Let's check this out. The items are pretty well hidden, but when you spot one, it seems like it should have been obvious. In other words, they did a really good job with this. But what's with the green thing over by the item list? Do we have Itsy Bitsy Spider climbing up the water spout? No, that's your hint system. When you find an item, you earn hint points. No, not hint points, hint points. You spend them in a certain way that we'll see in a moment. As usual, there's some particular item that we need to find among all the clutter. We found books in a library. What are the odds of that? I was down to one hockey stick and just couldn't find it. Time to try the hint system. I never actually played hockey, but the guys I knew who did never had a stick that looked like that. You saw how it works. Show a silhouette, one point. Show what it looks like, three points. Show where it is, five points. It's a really easy system to use and it's generous with the points. You can only have 15 points max, but it keeps what you don't use from the previous puzzle and it takes no effort at all to replenish it after you use it. It doesn't slap you in the face like Vatican Mysteries did, but it doesn't screw with you like Bermuda Triangle did. This one gives you options and it works. The best one I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. 
and you lose points for too much random clicking. Well, crap, there goes my favorite method. There's another stack of books in this market, so after you clear it all out, it's on to that burial chamber. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say somebody put them there. Maybe somebody from the 17th century. I don't want to know what that library find is going to look like. Now that you have all the books, you have to arrange them. This is our first mini game. You can swap any two, proximity doesn't matter. Obviously, the goal is to make this into a coherent picture because Carter has decided that the picture that's formed by the book spines is going to be more important than whatever might be written in them. Because archaeology, I guess. When it's done, this happens. I admit I don't see what he's talking about except for the rather obvious writing that appeared below it. But our protagonist is all excited about it, so let's get going. That concludes Act 1. As Act 2 begins, you're off to start a new excavation. You're looking to hire diggers and all that good stuff. Really? The guy just described exactly what you need and how his men fit the bill, and you're surprised that he also knows where you're going? Not too bright there, Carter. From the next three puzzles, you collect a bandana, a pickaxe, and some goggles. Time for the next mini-game, where the goal is to break through a wall into another chamber. In this one, you click on pairs of colors to clear them. The more you have in a row or a group, the more you can clear. As you go, bits of the wall start to shift, then fall away. Somewhere along the way, it reaches a tipping point where the rest just crumbles and reveals the next puzzle. Clear that out, and that's Act 2. And just like that, we had discovered a new tomb in the Valley of the Kings. Mr. Bakari's diggers turned out to be everything he had promised. It was almost like they already knew exactly where to dig. The tomb had clearly been hidden on purpose, and the graffiti on the entrance gave me an idea why. It said the tomb held the poison cup of the boy king. Now, I'm not one to jump to conclusions, but I decided to play a hunch and visit the forensics lab at the Egyptian Museum while the workers finished clearing the tomb. At the lab, you meet the head forensic anthropologist. Carter explains that he wants to look at toxicology results from King Tut's mummy and compare it to other mummies because he's beginning to think the boy King was murdered. She sets things up for him. Find some more of those in the other two rooms and you're ready for another minigame. At this point, it almost seemed like we were getting a little desperate for things to hide in the pictures. We started getting things like letters and numbers, which isn't terribly challenging for the most part. I'm not sure why it got a little lazy there, but there wasn't too much of it, so it was tolerable. This leads us to the easiest maze game I've ever seen. It opens a room full of scrolls. I'm not showing you that because I had a glitch and didn't capture that part. And as I mentioned before, you can't go back without starting a whole new game. I also didn't get the next part where a visitor stops by. She tells you that the ancient cult of Amun-Ra is still active and the reason those scrolls were hidden in that chamber is because the cult will do anything to keep them from ever seeing the light of day again. They can't destroy them because somebody wrote the name Amun-Ra on each scroll and it's taboo to destroy anything with his name written on it. So they did the next best thing. She warns that this cult is still active and now that he's found this chamber he's basically in danger from them. Carter blows it off and keeps working. 
Our next stop is Akhenaten's tomb. We're collecting tools again. I think I know what's coming at the end of this game. We get a little background on Akhenaten. The pharaoh Akhenaten shocked his people by turning away from the cult of Amun-Ra and introducing a new cult that worshipped the sun disk known as Aten. When the pharaoh built his new capital at Amarna, central to the plan was the great temple of the Aten. It was there that the cult dedicated to the sun disk was fully established. Finish clearing things and gathering tools and we take down another wall to find a hidden chamber. Behind it, we find this. The artwork in this game is very nice. Carter returns to the museum all excited about his new finds, but Dr. Meddy has some bad news. There's nothing for it but to keep on exploring. In the next group of sites, we're collecting stone ring locks again. It's supposed to be a maze. You solve it by rotating the rings. Let's see how this works. There's easy and then there's this. If you remember, in Bermuda Triangle, I talked about how my ADD brain can sort out paths like this ahead of time before I start making a move. Yeah, that's what I did here, and moving the second ring seemed like the best. But I didn't expect it to just fall into place. You know, guys, you could make this easier. Just make me stare at it for two seconds, and then it unlocks itself. If you're going to make it stupid easy, don't half-ass it. The hidden room follows the same floor plan as the other one we found. On the way back to the museum to tell Dr. Meddy, we run into Dr. Davenport. See? Too much makeup will kill you. We head out to do some more archaeology and see if this cult of Amun Ra was responsible for Tut's murder. In a scroll room, we find this. Next, we examine a map of KV-100 and find this. My keen instincts are telling me there's a pattern shaping up here. If I can just figure out what it is. You'll revisit a lot of rooms in this game, each time with a different set of items to find. 
As with Bermuda Triangle, there's a bunch of items in each place that don't belong, but they're not on your list. Some of them pop up on the list later, some don't. It makes going back to the same place okay, because you have no idea what you're going to be searching for this time. When you collect all the tiles, it's time to figure out what to do with them. The idea is to swap the tiles around until you make a coherent sentence. Each tile represents a piece of the sentence, and when you get one in the right place, it turns yellow. Like that. You get another warning about the cult of Amun-Ra and their desire to keep the secret of Tut's death a secret, then head out for more digging. One of the sites appears to have a picture of someone giving King Tut a possibly poisoned cup. Oh yeah, and we're collecting different colored gems from each map. Oddly enough, at least one of them doesn't have any, just to keep you on your toes. And is it just me, or does the shape of Tut's face look a lot like that panda on his lap? We end up with four colors of gems, red, yellow, green, and purple. We're supposed to hammer them into silly shapes. That's where Lucky Charms come from. You play the gem game until the wall comes down. Here's how it works. Refracting sunlight through them and onto the wall showed which stones should be removed and in what order. Oh, that's what we were doing. Right, I get it. That room yields some amazing treasures, but Carter can't help thinking that I's tomb is still hiding something. But before he can think about it more, his head digger wants a word with him. He's part of another secret society that's as dedicated to preserving the memory of Akhenaten as the cult of Amun-Ra is dedicated to eradicating it. His group believes that the cult murdered King Tut with poison that didn't kill him immediately. He woke up when the embalmers started doing their work. But the new pharaoh, I, the guy whose tomb we're examining, was there and ordered them to continue. Basically, they dissected him while he was still alive. But that was how many thousand years ago? Why does anybody care now? Why all this intrigue over events that happened so far in the distant past? It says to look for bandages. There's plenty right there on the mummy, but I guess that's not what they want. Oh, over there. Okay. You clear a few more rooms and then have a chat with Dr. Davenport. During this time, except for doing six more hidden picture puzzles, absolutely nothing happens. It feels a bit like padding. In the next chapter, we revisit several of the places we've already been looking for other items. In this group, we're collecting tiles again, so it looks like we're headed for another sentence to unscramble. In one room, I'm trying to find several goblets. There's one, and I see the other one right over there. Click on it. Hey, you're a goblin. Let me pick you up. What's going on here? If that's not a goblet, what is it? A full-grown gob? I guess I'll find out. That is not a goblet. That is a wine glass. No wonder I couldn't find it. Best I can recall, that was the only time something like this happened, but if you play the game, be aware of it. If you know your fancy dining stemware better than these guys, it could cause you problems. Finish collecting all six tiles in specially marked boxes? No, that was something else. Sure enough, we have another mystery sentence to decipher. Two of the tiles are already in the right place, so it should be fairly easy. When it's done, it says this. I see how he got shadows, but where did he find beneath the earth in that? Oh, well, he's been doing that all along, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Just go with it. I'm still not sure what the glyphs I've translated have to do with all this, but between the Mr. Bukhari story and Ms. Davenport's expertise, I've been able to put together a fairly clear picture of what happened to Tutankhamun. I haven't had any luck finding any hard evidence, though, either about Tut's murder or the person who's been sabotaging my investigation. I was beginning to think I'd come all this way just to run into a brick wall, but Ms. Nabibi paid me a visit and changed all that. Not Nabari Nabibi. I 
I don't know who told him that, but I know a little about archaeology, and about 65% of it is guesswork trying to interpret what you found. Close is a very real thing in that field. Either he had a really bad teacher, or he's come up with some goofy ideas on his own. Either way, he's wrong. Okay, that sailed right over her head. How nice of you to decide that for me. Allow me to return the favor. No! Again, why does anybody care? This happened how many thousand years ago? What's the purpose of trying to keep it covered up, even to the point of threatening people's lives? I still don't get it. A scarab sconce. I wonder what that's about and what I'm supposed to do with it. Isn't a sconce the thing on the wall that you put a torch in? That sword joins our sconce, and I'm more puzzled than ever. You collect several more items, and eventually you find yourself here. I'm sorry, what barge? I'm still looking at that collection of stuff at the bottom of the screen and wondering how much alcohol went into its development. Oh, I see. We loot these things from other tombs, then put them in here to fool other archaeologists. Why didn't Indiana Jones think of that? You place all the items, then I guess it's time to pull that drain plug that's been on our item list all this time. I didn't get to pull it. I guess it was just there to taunt me. As we get closer to the end of the game, things like that seem to get a little sloppy in places. Well, what do we find now that we drained the tub? Okay, and then? This is the payoff puzzle, so naturally it's loaded with stuff. There were times when I wondered if the item list would ever end. If you've been watching closely, you may have noticed that the items of significance are a different color in the list than the mundane stuff. So you may have also noticed that there's a bunch of them in this list. Up to now, the most we've had in any list was two. I didn't bother to count these, I just kept searching and clicking, idly wondering what we're building out of random parts this time. They're keys to opening this sarcophagus. Here we go. Dr. Meddy was the one who stole the scrolls and who's been trying to thwart you all along. He's a member of the cult of Amun Ra and was doing his part to try and keep King Tut's murder a secret. I still wonder why anybody cares thousands of years later. What could anyone do with the information? Who could it hurt? Who cares if your great 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 grandfather was in on it. What does that have to do with you? Maybe Dr. Meddy can shed some light on that.
Maybe not. He's an Amun Ra worshiper, and that means they have to keep this secret hidden, even if it means killing their friends. I still don't get why. The cult still exists. So what? If the world learned that their ancestors murdered King Tut, what harm would it do to them? I still can't really fathom the premise of this whole thing. All in all, that story was pretty lame. The puzzles, on the other hand, are outstanding. Some of them were the most challenging I've seen yet, and the artwork is so well done, the objects blend right in until you notice them and say, Duh! I love this hint system. It gives you options, you have to earn it to a certain degree, and it's really easy to use. If you just start random clicking, too many wrong guesses starts draining your hint bank just to keep you honest. Sometime after we passed the halfway point in the game, a few things started to feel a little lazy. For example, using letters and numbers as findable items, and most of the time they're just out there in the open. But I can deal with that, and it's not an unusual phenomenon in a game. Everything else about the puzzles and the minigames is good enough that I can overlook it. Overall, I only have one major gripe. We never did find out what a pyramid was. I'm Irving, and I have no life. Just like you. You just start random clicking, too many wrong guesses starts draining your hint bank just to keep you honest. Bink, not bank, bank, not bink. Binkity bank, bank.